Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Paul K. Mwaura. The entrepreneur on the road has been to various parts of Mombasa and now we are in Changamwe. We are meeting a man who aspires to make your house clean but has ventured now into public service vehicles cleaning, especially buses. Entrepreneurs are the key drivers of tomorrow's innovations and integral to creating a thriving economy. They identify existing gaps in the market and turn them into viable business ventures. Today we spend time with Paul Mushira, an entrepreneur who is in the vehicle cleaning and fumigation business, a trade that has seen him travel for miles across Kenyan urban towns and beyond the borders in the region to make money. Hey Paul, how are you? I'm fine, come to my office, we have a sure, talk. Sure. No problem. All Let's right. go. This Thank way? You. Okay. No problem. His background is outstanding. Paul worked as a petrol attendant between 1998 and the year 2000 in several petrol stations in Nakuru and was able to save 100,000 shillings in one year. My late mom was a, was a businesswoman. I used to travel to, with her in a, a business, uh, business uh, trips. And I learned a lot from her. But in that spirit, uh, that's when I started the business, I knew I wouldn't uh, like to be employed for so long. That's why I saved, because one of my friends uh, who was, we were staying together in the same uh, estate. Eh? In Nairobi then. In Nairobi then. Huh? He came and uh, gave me an idea. He asked me to buy the equipment to clean uh, sofa sets and carpets. Initially, his idea was uh, to clean homes. He bought into it, but while still working in a petrol station, he thought cleaning vehicles would see him get more clients compared to carpet cleaning. Initially, I started uh, by cleaning the interior of the buses. The upholstery, the seats, you can see the interior. That's what I was doing because there, there was no one doing that business. So I started like that. So I won so many tenders in Nairobi. Then I ventured into Mombasa again because uh, the same people who operate in Nairobi are the same people who operate from Mombasa. He swiftly sprang into action, bought equipment from his savings, quit his job and started the business. He started applying for tenders to clean buses for major companies and luck was on his side since the services were on high demand then. He did the business on freelance basis and would travel to different towns within the country and different countries in East Africa whenever he was called upon to service his clients. Not only Mombasa, I will tell you, I used to go to Kampala to clean buses. There was no, no other person was cleaning that, uh, the, 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 the interior thing, yeah. I used to go to Dar es Salaam by then. Mushira would later relocate to Mombasa after securing a long-term contract with two major bus companies for cleaning and fumigating. However, this did not come easy. One thing that almost made me give, give up and get back to Nakuru, 2004, when the new government came into power, so they opened up and gave permits to so many operators. So my loyal customers, close shop. So at one point I felt that uh, it was hard now because you couldn't convince the new, uh, the, the new players because they, they didn't know the importance of and they were just starting. Today he has 15 employees and cleans more than 30 buses per day at a cost of 1,000 shillings per bus. The, the, the returns are good and I'm able to pay my, my men well also but uh, you find that uh, you can't push them too much because uh, business is not always good these days because competition is too high. You know, when you, when you charge exorbitantly, they, they will always come someone else who knows better than you or knows like you, but is a bit cheaper. So I keep those standards, knowing that I'm paying my men well, I'm getting good money, but my customers are happy and not pressured. Yeah. In the wake of modern times, competition in the venture has skyrocketed affecting client turnover and pricing. He has had to do more than just cleaning and fumigating to remain relevant and competitive in the market. Hard work, kujitolea na kufresha customer, unatuwacha mambo yako nyuma. 
unaingia kwa kwa kwa, kwa, kwa biashara kabisa unaingia kwa kazi kabisa wewe mwenyewe before now you get your men like that, right now i don't do anything but i chip it sometimes eh? let the customers be happy and secondly uh, because I'm, i know i'm there myself i believe that uh, the challenges and uh, challenges are not uh, that major talking of competition how do you how do you get to market yourself out there how do you get your word out there so that people can know about your company okay uh, that's good uh, at first i uh, used to to get these stickers the the stickers i used to stick them especially in Nairobi i used to advertise myself with using those stickers in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a matatus i used to borrow permission to to stick them i used to sweet talk those guys eh? secondly the most important important one i used to go personally meet the owners meet the managers and talk to them he attributes his success in the venture to good customer service that has led to many referrals being present and directly involved in the business but what about uh the advice that you can give to somebody who was employed and wants to get into business and they are probably fearing into getting out the the, the major problem with the starters or with the people who want to venture into businesses one major thing and uh, it, it used to affect me too people are never patient people want to get into the business and start making millions so making a lot of money at a go Like me my, break, my my major breakthrough came after around 10 years as I told you I almost gave up yes, yes. but uh, after 10 years that's when now things turn and uh, I'm getting better businesses better checks so never give up and uh, be patient even if it takes 5 to 10 years one day what you are doing believe in what you are doing because eventually you will make it After 14 years in the business, Peter is exploring other avenues to invest profits from his business. He wants to get into the stock exchange and greenhouse farming. I'm I'm I'm, I'm looking at it and uh, I'm trying to get uh, information so that I can uh, start doing such things because life is it's moving and uh, you can, I I want to get out of my comfort zone. Yeah and uh, do something more. You shouldn't focus on why you can't do something, which is what most people do. You should focus on why perhaps you can and be one of the exceptions. Steve Case, AOL co-founder and CEO. We appreciate and we welcome your comments and your feedback. Use the social media pages that are on your screen right now. We go on a short commercial break and when we come back, we have more stories for you, so please do not go away. See you shortly. We have just crossed over into Malindi. Welcome back to the show. This is the entrepreneur on the road. Our first guest tonight, we featured a guy in Mombasa whose trade is from moving from one place to another. We are now in Malindi featuring a lady who is a serial entrepreneur. She has a restaurant, a barber shop and a phone shop. So we are here to meet Mona Lisa or better known as Mama Johari here in Malindi. Mama Johari. Yes. Oh, hi Paul. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. Karibuni. Asante sana. We spend time with Mona Lisa Murimi, an iron business lady who is among the few exploiting the existing business opportunities in Malindi. 
Mona Lisa Murimi, who is also well known as Mama Johari in Malindi, was transferred to Malindi by her employer in the year 2000. She would later resign after discovering numerous business opportunities that she wanted to exploit. And I, I felt, uh, okay, I was entering a new industry, the banking industry. And then I decided actually what, I, what I'd, I'd prefer was to do business. I started by selling food in lunch boxes from the restaurant. I'd go around picking orders and dropping them in people's offices. Then I'd come back later for the money and the lunch boxes. So that's how we grew. All right. Yeah. Through that and then word of mouth and through the service at the restaurant we grew. All right. I'm sorry I forgot to mention episode home videos. Uh, I ran a video shop uh, called Episode and uh, that's when I realized business was in me because I was only 23 then and I was able to run a business with my boss in the States. So all, all through I knew I'd end up doing business because my, my parents are both business people and then I also felt that uh, business as a uh, thing in me. After resigning in 2008, today the entrepreneur runs three businesses, a restaurant, a barber shop and a phone shop. The day I wrote the resignation letter at DTB, I knew there was no turning back. Yeah, yeah but sometimes uh, my husband would say let's just sell the restaurant, but I, would, I was like no, never. There's no turning back. I decided to do this and I have to keep going. Mona Lisa has a degree in international relations and sociology from USIU Nairobi. She has previously worked in customer care for several organizations. And what I felt when I was studying is that um, I was not going to school just to get a job, but it was to open my mind so that I'd be able to, to take care of myself and my community through business. I, I was fortunate enough to have business minded parents but also just think out of the box you don't have to go to school to just get a certificate to get employed you can use whatever you get in school to to make a difference in the world upon resigning her husband gave her 300,000 shillings which she used as capital to start her business no I didn't have savings uh, because um, shortly before I joined the Diamond Trust Bank I had had a baby, I had uh, nursed a baby for seven months, so I didn't have any savings. So, and then having had an account with equity, with my husband having an account with equity prior to my being employed at DTB, I knew he, I could use his statements to, to get something. Her business has created employment to 17 members of staff, whom she has trained to offer good service to her clients. She attributes good customer service to success of any business. Our food is consistent. So even now, Paul, whatever you have today, if you come next week or next year, you find the same taste and the same quality. With, given the years of customer care I've had, over 15 years in the banking industry and the airline industry, I train my staff to, to think about the customer and give the best. Her business has been challenging but slowly growing. Mama Johari makes about 30,000 from the restaurant per day and about 100,000 from the barber shop a month. Actually, mostly the main challenge in Malindi is manpower. As the years go on, uh, somehow you get to get the right people. It's, I mean, for Johari's it has taken uh, five years to get the right people. So I can say, at least from the fifth and sixth year, um, I've been able to, to, they've given me a chance to do something else and that's what has given birth to the other two shops. Malindi is very seasonal because we are, uh, the economy is tourism, tourist driven. So we can have very good, like six good months in a year. Her major challenges include insecurity in Malindi, but she has been working extra hard to overcome them. Look, I go out and look for new clients because Malindi has grown. We have new people coming in. The, we have new businesses that have come in. 
new banks and all so right now the last this last month has been tough so i've been out i'd go out and meet new people the oh and remind the old people that joharis is still here and we have this and this new product that's what i do when it when it when they get the going gets tough yeah it's not just getting new customers we really struggle to maintain our customers it's a concept i got from the bank kyc you know your customer so we know our customers by name, we know what they do, we know what they like, so when they come, we give them what they want. And if it's a new customer, we try and understand the customer's needs. Eating out has become a growing and popular trend in the area. This is a key driver to sustainability and success of our food service business. She has cut down the cost of production for the restaurant by identifying a reliable source of raw materials. This has also led her to offering standard services to her clients. For the matoke, the carrots, ho and uh, maize, my grandmother does it. My husband's grandmother buys from Kagio. Kagio is, she lives in Kirenyaga, so then she puts it on a matatu to Nairobi and then Mkokoteni uh, um, puts it on the bus. She is currently working to expand her services by opening more branches beyond the coastal region in the near future. I was planning to go to see Mpeketoni before all this happened, but I was hoping to open one in uh, Kilifi and uh, Mtuapa and Mpeketoni. Mona Lisa, or better known as Mama Johari in Malindi, believes every great dream begins with a dreamer and that the reason most people fail to achieve their goals is that they don't define them or even seriously consider them as believable or achievable. Okay, for those who are, are employed, I realize that there are some people who are just not made to, to run businesses, but it's where there's a will, there's a way. And um, I didn't study hotel management. I studied sociology and international relations. But I'd advise somebody to follow their passion, do what they feel they like and love. Because business has its ups and downs. And if you don't have the passion, you won't make it. And, and you have to be consistent. At least, at least give the business 18, two years, 18 months. Yeah, and then you can get to know. And then also think outside the box. It has taken falling and waking up and going on again. It is the same thing I'm going to tell the entrepreneurs. You never give up. You tell yourself, in fact, you do not have a, a, a chance to give up. Using the story of Vasco da Gama, I sort of want to relate the stories we've had tonight. Vasco da Gama came into Mombasa and left a mark in the name of For Jesus. He came into Malindi and left a mark in the name of the Vasco da Gama pillar. Our first guest tonight left Nakuru, came to Mombasa and he wants to make his business known there. Our second guest came from Nairobi into Malindi and wants to make her business known there. I hope you learned something and you're inspired by what they say. That is all we have for you this week. Let the conversation begin. Use our Facebook page, use our Twitter handle, use the SMS number that is on your screen and the email address. They are all on your screen right now. That is all we have for you this week. Until next week, same time, same place. It is good night and goodbye from team here in Malindi. This has been the Entrepreneur on the Road.